Digital Performer's pitch editing features are some of my favorite features about DP ever since they were first introduced. Um, couple that with the precision editing you have in the sequence editor and I have full control over both pitch and time. So let me show you how I typically use pitch automation to tweak phrases by singers or by instrumentalists. Here I am in my sequence and I'm going to bring up the lead vocal track which is the LV comp and I need to pull it up in the sequence editor. If your preferences are set that way, you can do that just by double clicking or by hitting Shift S for sequence editor. Okay, now that I'm in my sequence editor, the next thing I notice is I got quite a bit of chaos going on here because there's a lot of tracks showing and I'd really like to just zero in on the lead vocal track. So I'm going to come over here to my track selector and I'm going to option click the LV comp channel. What the option key does is tell DP show only the tracks that I'm clicking on and hide everything else. All right, now that I'm just looking at my lead vocal track, obviously it's way too small to edit. So let's fix that real quick. I'm gonna use another keyboard shortcut, command up arrow, which increases the vertical zoom. And then I'll also hit command right arrow so I can increase the horizontal zoom and really focus in on this one phrase. Okay, now that that's nice and big, we're looking at the sound bites view, basically the waveform view of this track. Let me go over here to the Layers menu, and I'm going to switch it from Sound Bytes over to the Pitch layer so I can see the pitch analysis. Now, DP has already done the pitch analysis in the background by default, and you're looking at two composite views of it. The bars show where DP senses a note has been reached, while the blue lines show active real-time tracking of every minute change in pitch. So it's, the blue lines are more of a micro view of what the pitch is doing, whereas the bars are more of a macro view. Last thing I'm going to do before we start operating on this is really zoom into the waveform closely. I'll go over here to the magnifying glass, and let me turn that up a little bit so I can really see the minute changes within this phrase. Now, let me play it for you so you can just hear the raw audio from the singer. I'll take what I've got and move on. Okay, so let me show you just a few basic pitch things you can do. Now, right off the bat, you can just be grabbing these bars and pulling them into place. One thing I notice is the two longest notes in this phrase are right at the end, move and on. And I really want to make sure they're absolutely centered on the pitch. Now, in a real-world situation, I'd absolutely be using my ears because a guitar or another band instrument might be slightly out of tune, so you really want to orally judge whether the pitch is locking or not. But for the sake of argument, let's just say that we need to correct this a little bit to bring it more in line. So just grab the bars and start moving them to the target pitch. You'll see by default that DP is going to automatically grab them to the nearest half-step. If that's not what you want, if you really want to be able to fine tune a pitch, DP will let you do that too. Just hold down the command key while you're moving one of those bars and you'll see that now you can move it freely and you can make a note slightly more sharp or flat and really get it exactly where you want it to be. One nice thing, as you can see, is that as I make pitch changes, DP is coloring my changes in red, whereas any part of the sound bite that's not been repitched is in blue. Now, if I were to mess this up and I just want to start from scratch again, DP makes it easy to do that too. Just select the entire area and go to the audio menu and choose pitch automation, clear pitch. That gets rid of any pitch changes I've made. Also, it's really important to note, all these pitch changes that I'm making right now are not touching the original audio that was recorded during the session. These are non-destructive edits, so you can work with a peace of mind of knowing you can always go back to the way it was originally. Another great technique is you can actually use this to create pitches that didn't exist before at all. Watch me drag this note to a completely different pitch and then have a listen. I'll take what I've got and move on. Let's say that you'd actually like to reshape the pitch curve of a note or a phrase. That can be done easily too by using the pencil tool or one of the line tools. Let me show you the pencil tool just for a simple example. What I'm going to do is double tap the P key to bring up the pencil tool and I'm going to redraw that curve at the very end of the last note because she put a little bit of a wiggle, almost a slight vibrato there, but we can straighten that out to be pitch perfect. Have a listen to this. I'll take what I've got and move on. 
Finally, I'll show you one less technique. Let me double tap the A key to get back to my regular pointer tool. Let's say that the singer sang this entire phrase, but I just felt like the entire thing was sitting a little bit sharp. Well, that's very easy to correct in DP's pitch layer too. What I'm gonna do is drag a box around the entire phrase, then I'm gonna hold down the command key and I'm gonna drag it slightly up or slightly down until it's repitched the way I want it to be. Just for the sake of illustration, let me move it quite a ways away and we'll take a listen to what it sounds like. I'll take what I've got and move on. I mentioned earlier that all the edits done in the pitch automation layer are completely non-destructive, meaning the audio on the hard drive from the original session is absolutely untouched. But what if you actually want to commit them to disk, as in maybe you need to export this file to send it to somebody else and you want it in its tuned version? There's a really easy way to print these changes to disk, so to speak. We can go back to the sound bites layer and then select the sound bite by clicking on it once and then either control click or right click on it and you'll get a contextual menu. From here you can choose merge sound bites. The shortcut is also option shift M. And by doing that, DP is now going to write an entirely new audio file to the disk which incorporates these changes. Now, if you do the same thing and right click or control click on that sound bite, you can use a new command called reveal in finder and it'll show you that brand new written audio file with your changes hard coded into it. This typically isn't necessary unless you're exporting your file to another platform or something like that. So that's a quick overview of Digital Performer's pitch tools. Speaking personally, this is one of the most powerful tools I've found in DP because it's so well integrated. The fact that I can be in the middle of my mix and I hear a note clash, I can just switch to the pitch layer, grab its bar, move it where it needs to be, and move on with my work. Using these tools, I have complete control over the pitch of any monophonic, vocal, or instrumental track.